order to remind them to walk from now on. I thought I'd seen a rocket flying across here, but we'll have to remind them now to walk from now on, or we don't want any accidents. Let's bow in a wee word of prayer before we open and read from God's Word this morning. Our Heavenly Father, we do pray for the little ones now as they go upstairs to Christ, Lord, that you would protect them, and for those who look after them, Lord, that you will help them, and that, Lord, for their wee lessons that they'll learn upstairs and the fun that they'll have together, that, Lord, you'll keep them safe and bless them up there. We pray now for ourselves. And, Lord, what thou hast to say to us this morning, we pray that you would give us receptive hearts, for we ask it through the precious name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Now, we will turn into our Bibles this morning to the Old Testament. And we're turning to the Old Testament book of Ecclesiastes, please. And we're in Ecclesiastes chapter number 8. In the middle of your Bible, you'll find the book of Psalms. And after the book of Psalms, we come to Proverbs. And after the book of Proverbs, we come to this book called the book of the Ecclesiastes. I wonder this morning, have you ever took the time to read through the book of Ecclesiastes? And I'm, I'm encouraging you to do that. Not just to read through the book, friends, for the sake of reading the book of Ecclesiastes, but, but to read the book for yourselves slowly and allowing your mind and allowing your heart and allowing your soul to absorb the great many truths that are found in, found in the book of Ecclesiastes. It's a great book, and I believe every Christian should read the, a chapter of the Ecclesiastes and a chapter of Proverbs every day, because you'll find in the book of Ecclesiastes many ways and wonderful counsels for life. And if any book goes hand in hand with the book of Ecclesiastes, it's the Proverbs. And I believe every Christian should read a chapter of Proverbs and a chapter of Ecclesiastes every day as, lo as well as your own devotional reading. It was written by a man called Solomon. Well, Solomon identifies himself in the book of Ecclesiastes as the preacher. And you know, life, when you read through the book of Ecclesiastes, you'll find for the writer of Ecclesiastes, life is largely behind him. He has lived most of his life. And what the writer of Ecclesiastes does as he writes he takes stock of life between the horizon of his birth and the very close horizon of his death. Mind you young people think, yes, we know it all. And we think that the older people don't know anything. But you know, friends, those people who have been on the road of life for a long time know a lot of things more than what you and I have been through. And Solomon gives us many ways counselors. And God himself saw to it that the book of Ecclesiastes would be found in the canon of Holy Scripture. There are many enigmas in life. puzzling and mystery. The greatest enigma in this world in which we live is man himself. Do you think this morning this world is in a mess because God is out of control? Do you think 
Our nation today is in a mess because God is out of control. It's not that God is out of control. It's all down to man. You see, man's enterprise, listen to this, man's enterprise is to reach the unreachable, and he'll do everything in his power to reach it. And he'll give everything that he has to reach the unreachable. But the first lesson you will learn in the book of Ecclesiastes is this one. Chapter 1, verse 14. Don't turn over to it because I ain't going to quote it. The writer says this, I have seen all the works that are done under the sun. And then he puts it like this, all is vanity and vexation of spirit. You see, the writer puts a lot on life in this book. When you get to the end of your day, friends, you'll realize that nothing in life, money, riches, stardom, it's all vanity and vexation of spirit. You see, man thinks he is somebody. But chapter 2, verse 16 says this, For there is no remembrance of the wise more than of the fool, forever seeing that which now is and the days to come shall be forgotten. You take chapter 7 and verse 2. You know what it says in chapter 7, verse 2? It is better to go to the house of mourning than to the house of feasting. For that is the end of all men, and the living shall lay it to their heart. You know what it says? Here's one for you. You know what it says in chapter 7, verse 17? Be not thou over much wicked, neither be thou foolish. Why shouldest thou die before thy Time. People tell me you can't die before your time. I'll tell you you can die before your time, all right. And Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 17 gives you two grounds in which a man can die before their time. And I think that one of the great lessons for young people today is found in this book. It's Ecclesiastes 12 and verse 1. Listen to what it says. It says, Remember now thy Creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. Do you know what this says, young people? It says, Old age and death comes soon. Enjoy life in youth, knowing that God will judge. But we are coming to a text this morning, and perhaps this text in Ecclesiastes chapter 8 is something this morning that you need to hear. It's in chapter 8, and it's in verse number 12. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verse 12. Here's God's message. And I want to read this slowly, and I wonder this morning... Is God going to speak to you? I believe He is through this one verse. Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 12. Though a sinner do evil a hundred times, not just once or twice he, he's not saying though a sinner makes a mistake now and then. No. He says, though a sinner do evil a hundred times, and his days be prolonged. Yet surely I know that it shall be well with them that fear God, which fear before him. One more time I'm going to read. Though a sinner do evil a hundred times, and his days be prolonged, Yet surely I know 
that it shall be well with them that fear God. Which fear before him. And we know God will bless that text to our hearts this morning. I wonder, child of God, this morning, is it possible that life is not working out the way you would have liked it to work out? Or I wonder this morning, child of God, is life not going the way that you've planned it? Because in that text this morning, God has two things for you and I to see, and God has two messages that He wants you and I to take on board this morning. Do you know the first thing God wants you to see in this text? I believe every one of us can quote this. Every one of us perhaps has experienced this. Let me say this, every one of us thinks like this. And in this text, first of all, there's a problem that bothers us. There's a problem. I wonder, has this problem ever bothered you? For me and you, child of God, oftentimes it used to bother me. And that's the first thing God wants you and I to see in this text this morning, a problem that bothers us. I wonder, does this problem bother you? Now, let's look at the problem that often bothers us. Listen to what it says. Though a sinner do an evil an hundred times, and his days be prolonged. I wonder, is that a problem that bothers you, child of God? Have you ever asked yourself the question, why does good things happen to bad people? And why does bad things happen to good people? And you know, child of God, why is it at times that injury and insult always comes to the good. Insult and injury always comes to the godly. Insult and injury always comes to the righteous. While the evil man, the sinful man, seems to go scot-free. Now, would that be a problem that would bother you? Why is it that good people suffer? Why is it this morning godly people suffer? Why is it this morning righteous people suffer? And the ungodly seems to never suffer. Would you say that's a problem that bothers you? Mind you, it was a problem that bothered me. There are many puzzling problems in life. I'll tell you something now. This was one of them. Why does, all, why does good come to the bad and bad always comes to the good? A young lad was in school one day. He could barely walk. He had polio. Polio. And he was a good wee lad. And nobody could understand why that wee lad was allowed to suffer. And I come to the end of that story in a wee moment or two because I want to just put it in now. as I am at this point. Why does bad things happen to good people and yet good things happen to bad people? 
Do you know in the book of Job you read this? Wherefore do the wicked live become old, yea, are mighty in power? Tell me, does that ever bother you, child of God? Maybe it's bothering somebody at this very moment in time. God seems unfair. Tracy and I know a couple. A number of years ago, their daughter got married. Set up home across the border. Were spending their first married Christmas together. It was Christmas 2009. Godly couple. This was their first Christmas at home. Their own wee home. Had the tree decorated for the first time. Presents under the tree. Oh, this was their first Christmas. The husband woke up on Christmas morning. First Christmas together. Only to find his young wife lying dead beside her. Twenty-six years old. Young Christian lady. Godly lady. And this text tells me, though a sinner do an evil an hundred times, his days are still prolonged, and yet good people die young. You ever read Psalm 73? Psalm 73 is all about this. It talks about the suffering of the righteous. And it talks about the success of the wicked. And the psalmist, as he was penning this psalm, said to himself, My feet almost slipped because of it. Verse Psalm 73, verse 3 talks about the prosperity of the, of the wicked. Verse, 40 talk, verse 4 talks about the peace of the sinner. Verse 5, the pleasure of the sinner. 6 to 11, it talks about the pride of the sinner. Verse 12 to 16, it talks about the, the progress of the sinner. And yet the righteous get the what the wicked deserves. The righteous gets what the wicked deserves. Child of God, is that a problem that bothers you? But here's where the problem lies. The problem lies when you and I look through the eyes of flesh rather than the eyes of faith. And I wonder this morning, child of God, do you feel short-changed in life? Do you feel that life has short-changed you? Do you feel today that life has dealt you a very unfair hand? And this morning you have complained to God and says, Why? Why? But the psalmist in Psalm 73 went to the house of the Lord one day. And he learned a lesson that was vital. Though the righteous progress, or sorry, though the wicked prosper, and though good things comes upon bad people, he learned this. They come to their end. What is wrong, child of God, at times? And what causes this problem? We look through the eyes of flesh rather than the eyes of faith. 
Job said, Wherefore do the wicked live, become old, yea, the mighty in power? Yet Job says, In a moment they go down to the grave. Here's a question that may be on your heart. Why do some evil people live long? This is the text this morning. It says, Though a sinner do evil an hundred times, and his days will be prolonged, why is a bad person's days prolonged for? Do you want to know why? Here's the answer. Second Peter 3 and 9. God is long-suffering. not willing that any should perish. Do you know God wants to see an evil man saved? You come tonight, God has given me a message on God's heart for sinners. You come and you listen to the message, God's heart for sinners. Not man's heart, God's heart for sinners. And their days are prolonged because God's patience is prolonged. And if you're sitting in this meeting this morning not saved, you're not dead yet because God in His love and in His mercy has prolonged your days to give you chance after chance after chance after chance to repent and get saved. Don't you think you're sitting in this church this morning alive and well because you have a healthy diet? No. The reason why your days are prolonged on, see, friend, is because God loves you too much and God has given you all these years to get saved. But God's patience will run out someday. It could be this day. Theirs may be prolonged, but they come to an end. God is slow to anger. That's why their days are prolonged. God is plenteous in mercy. That's why their days are prolonged. An unsaved man, unsaved woman, you listen this morning, the reason why you're still alive because God's mercy has allowed you to be alive to this very day. For you to repent of your sin and for you to trust His Son to save you. And now is the accepted time, and behold, now is the day of salvation, for you mightn't have had many more days left. And if you're not saved in this meeting this morning, can I urge you to come to the Lord Jesus and be saved? He's the only Savior there is. Your days have been prolonged to keep you out of hell, and they give you a chance to be saved. A problem that bothers us, but here is the promise that blesses us. Take a wee look at that text again. Though a sinner do evil a hundred times, and his days be prolonged, here's the promise. Yet surely I know that it shall be well with them that fear God. You know what God's trying to say here? God's trying to say, in spite of your trials, God is able to turn your trials into triumphs. God is able to turn your sorrows into singing. God is able to turn your grief into gladness. Let's come back to the young lad with the polio. He excelled in every way. The most lovable young fellow who was in lots of pain. One of his peers came to him one day wondering how he could keep smiling. And this is what he said. He says, I don't feel better because of my pain. 
Because I have asked the Lord Jesus not to allow the bitterness and the pain touch my heart. It may have touched my legs, but it hasn't touched my heart. even though I have polio. It is well with me because I have Jesus. It is well with me because he is Lord of my life. It is well with me because God has allowed it. It shall be well with them that fear God. Fanny Crosby was blinded at the age of seven. Somebody asked Fanny Crosby, are you not better with God because you were blinded at seven years of age? Fanny Crosby says, I thank God I was blinded because I see more of God than what you do. You know why? Do you know the secret? The secret lies in this text. And it's a, it, listen, it's a missing ingredient in Christian living today. Do you know what it is? It's the fear of God. Listen to the text. It says, Though a sinner do an evil an hundred times in his days be prolonged, yet surely I shall know that it shall be well with them. With who? Them that fear God. I believe that's what's lacking today. Fear of God. When one truly fears God, one truly trusts God, and one really casts everything upon Romans 5 and 8, Or Romans 8 and 20, it's sorry. When one truly fears God, they know that even in the worst of times it shall be well. One that fears God can really say this. For I know that all things works together for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. On this side of eternity, child of God, nothing makes sense. Through the eye of flesh, nothing makes sense. But God sees the finished picture. And child of God, this morning, listen. It shall be well with them that fear God and fear before him. Oh, that God's people would learn to fear God. Oh, that the fear of God, reverent fear, grip my heart. then we would see things in a different light. As far as the evil man is concerned, God seeth his end. And God says to your heart this morning, in spite of your suffering and pain, and even though life seems unfair, Learn the lesson God is saying, it shall be well with them that fear God.
the child of God who fears God. When bad things happen to them, can lift up their voice not in complaint, but can say, It shall be well. Oh, why? It shall be well, child of God. For you and for me, it shall be well. In spite of how unfair life is, how painful it may be, how tearful it may be. You listen to this. Here's God's message. It shall be well. Now I'm going to bring this to a conclusion. And I want you to come with me to verse number 13, for this is where I'm finished. But it shall not be well with the wicked. Now, what does God want to say? Listen. Life mayn't be good for the righteous and for the saved, but it shall be well as far as eternity is concerned. Life might be pleasurable. Life might be good to the unsaved, but it shall not be well for them in eternity. See, if you're not saved in this meeting this morning, you're only one breath away from eternity. And this book is saying, it shall not be well with thee in eternity. You will leave all things behind in life when death comes. You need to get saved today, sir. And you need to get saved today, dear. It might be well today, but it mightn't be too well tomorrow. And I'm pleading for your soul this morning. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him. While he is near, saint of God, whatever you and I are called to suffer, you remember what God says to us, it shall be well. May God bless his word and take comfort from it for your heart this morning. And we're going to finish with 580.